I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. There are updates on Cougar Island. In fact, there are live updates because uh, as of a few minutes ago, our Discord was popping off. Oh no, what? I haven't been paying attention to the Discord. So... Cougar Island is the humans for people who haven't listened to the last the episode at the end. Cougar Island is a human rights violation that was thought up by Brandon in the twilight minutes of uh, what was the name of the episode? I forget what I even called it. Cougar Island. The episode. Yeah, Cougar it, it Island, was called Cougar 84. Island. So yeah, there was in our Discord, um, join Discord, whatever link somewhere available. Um, it turns out that Lenwood, one of our listeners, uh has some education in human rights and ethics violations. So he had a very lengthy post that where there was the, you saw the word article and section called out. So there, there, there were on our original conception of Cougar Island, several human rights violations. Um, so I thought maybe uh, there's fight Island. So we could move it from Victoria Island in, in uh, Canada to fight Island in uh, Abu Dhabi where the UFC is, is using that to skirt uh, COVID restrictions. So I thought maybe the rules yep. would be a little bit looser there. Turns out still not so much. Len keeps using fancy man college words in articles and sections. You mean hu- universal human rights? Yeah. Anyway, universal univer- human rights. You forgot to put air quotes when you said that. Um, no, I, I didn't. I, I know what I did and that is exactly what I meant. So the, uh, then Clay Sinclair, another uh, name you you know if you listen to the podcast, Oklahoma C- uh, City, a state representative, um, is submitting a bill to file for a hunting license for Bigfoot. And so this, I believe, gives us plausible di- deniability. The reason you can't hunt Bigfoot in the first place is so you don't shoot at humans because he looks like a human. So now we can go, instead of Fight Island... Oklahoma City, if we have a hunting license, then we have plausible deniability for shooting at humans in the woods. So, that that I think could kind of work. Uh, Lenwood, again, not so much uh, on that page uh, with us. But, but then, this morning, I'm scrolling around, I'm looking, I'm looking. There are cougar cruises. Yes, that's... Okay, so Brandon, Brandon, are you saying... Because Cougar Cruises exist, we can have Cougar Island? No, so I posted about Cougar Cruises, and then, um, let's see, at the time of recording about 30 minutes ago, Clay, uh, I don't know, sorry, Marty Van Party, this is everybody, everybody's jumping on this boat, Marty Van Party suggests we host a Cougar Cruise and stage a shipwreck, um, and it seems an excellent way to, to populate the island. And we, we frame it like a prank show, right? So this is getting more and more plausible as we go. No, um, it's not. And thanks it's to the, not. the legal a shipwreck. consult from, from Len and then the, the ideas men, uh, Clay and Marty Vunt Party. Like, this is really... Clay Clay has already said that he wants nothing to do with the product the product that you're put, pitching. That still doesn't stop me from putting other people's names places. Okay. I'm, I'm stating this for the sake of uh, everything. That... No. Stop. Yeah. Oh, also, if you're that guy who complained about us not getting to the topic right away in a review, you're probably not going to like this episode either. You're probably not going to like any episode. No, you're not going to like any episode. I'm sorry, but that is just not what this podcast is about. Yes, we're about cryptids, but, like, we get distracted very easily. We get This is an on-topic distraction. We're kind of, like, ending the last episode by starting the new episode. Is it on, it's not really on topic to the subject matter, though, I would say. No. No. Well, as long as the subject matter is us, then anything we say is on topic. That's true. I mean, you, look at the cover art of this. Look at the art for this, this podcast. It's two dudes staring at each other 
while Bigfoot just sits menacingly in the center with his arms stretched around us. And he has a fanny pack. He does have a fanny pack. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Um... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, there's also a new Brandon fan club. Yeah. Uh-huh. I wasn't going to bring that up, but yes, there, there, there is a Brandon fan club. There's a Brandon fan club. It's the Himbo Brandon fan club. Yeah, it sh- it sure exists, Brandon. Yeah. They're uh we we basically now whenever I play uh the Vigi games with the clay, everybody comes to to give the Brando support. Yeah, it's a little upsetting. It's great. It's a little upsetting. It's a lot of like actually it's a lot of upsetting. Um Yeah. So once the fan club grows a little bit, I'm thinking we're going to start having group meetings. Mm, yeah? Yeah. And maybe light some, like, incense. Uh, and then there'll be some form of... Um, uh, just things where, like, I say things and then people do them. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to write some kind of paper. It'll probably be pretty long. It'll be a book. Uh, Brandon, yeah, are, are you? You're you're like trek. You're you're trekking cl- dangerously close to cult leader right now. There's, I see. I don't like that term cult leader anymore. I, I think more like the supreme Brandon. It's um, uh, I, people I know that this start is a, saying my liege. I know that this is a audio medium. But my eyebrows are fully raised, Brandon. They are. They're well above the rim of your I glasses. Hope, like, look at I my well, look at my eyebrows. You can't even see them. They're in line with my with my my glasses. Yours far. Like, oh yeah, they're way like, up there. I they're, I want this to like transcend. Um, I want this to transcend the audio medium. Yeah, basically, we will have almost no human sacrifices. Oh, oh that's my jam. The spam caller. <laughs> so with that, we're going to move away from the Himbo Ban- Brandon Club, and it's a Brandon good Club. Yes, take us into the podcast. Welcome Proper. to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we will take you on the journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this week's creature is humanoid in appearance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it likes to roam the watery areas of the Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Slovenia, Poland, etc. Just think of like cold European places. Mm-hmm. The earliest popular writing I found was in 1829, but it was around for like a while before that. There's no, we know it existed because it's about that and it was in the zeitgeist, but there's no real like solid writing um and i was unable to find any recent sightings do you know what it could be my self-dignity it is your self-dignity oh, it's cold and polish i guess yeah that's probably not wrong it's not far off no this yeah this this, <laughs> week, this, this week's topic is uh because no one's seen it in years is john's dignity no, today we're talking about the uh, Rusalka, which um, is like a European mermaid slash water spirit, uh, except she's pretty and doesn't have a tail. So like pre, like, well, that's like the Little Mermaid, but after she's on land. And um, does she still have the little floppy gills? The floppy gills? No floppy, floppy gills. gills. There is a way to physically tell. If you're looking at Rusalka and it's much more disturbing than like Waterworld gills behind the ear. I was thinking more um the boys style where uh the the Aquaman knockoff has like those like stomach gills that are really gross to look at. I've never seen the boys. Oh, you should. There's there's a bit involving a a dolphin that's very funny. There's the two shows I have to watch, I guess, are, are The Boys and um, that whatever is on Disney Plus with Vision. WandaVision? Yeah, WandaVision. 
I had to watch that. I have to. So I'm really far behind. I had to watch WandaVision. I have to watch the next season of The Boys. I have to watch the Mandalorian. Um, you I have to finish watch... the Mandalorian. No, I haven't watched any of season two. <sighs> so you're. So it's probably already been spoiled for you. Everything has been spoiled for me. There is literally nothing in season two that will surprise me because the internet is so terrible when it comes to talking about stuff now. You get to see the Mandalorian's penis. Oh, fuck. Well, <laughs> now I gotta watch. It, it's also covered in Beskar. Listen, that's a look. That is a look. That is a whole ass look. He got it. All oh, right? it's, a, it's a Beskar cage from ExtremeRestraints.com. <gasps> We're tying it all together. Do they sell Beskar? Listen, they don't have let's Beskar. Not, they definitely have cages, though. They definitely have cages, but let's not let's not give them free advertising. They gotta they gotta earn the advertising. They, they gotta give us the money. They gotta earn it. Did you hear there's a hacker because they made um they're like app controlled cages where you like someone else controls. What yes. Can, yeah. That yeah. is pretty amazing. Yeah, a dude who figured out how to turn like lock everyone's cage away permanently, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh like that guy. What uh, a, what a what a like mad scientist evil genius thing. That's what like codename kids next door level trickery. Oh, that reminds me. There was a, a SNL skit that I saw recently with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yes. And it was like the most evil person in the world skit mm-hmm. skit. I'm not going to go over it in here cuz it's a spoiler. But let's let's say okay, so there's evil scientists from all over the world. Yes, there's somebody who comes up with a shrink ray, and he's going to shrink all the national monuments. There's a girl who comes up with a freeze ray, and she's going to freeze all the national monuments. And then there's somebody who comes up with something actually evil, and it's played by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, and everyone there is like. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> He's like, what? I thought that you were supposed to be as evil as possible. That's funny. I'm gonna have to check that uh, out after this. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you the link if you want to look. Just look like uh, it, it was on. It was on Reddit recently. It was like the okay. darkest SNL sketch ever. Okay, um, I'll, I'll check that it, out. It was good. I'm not gonna talk about it on the podcast, like what it's about, because it's it's definitely got some trigger warnings. Nice. Uh, well. Nice. Uh, uh, let's see. Prior to the 19th century, according to the Slavic folklorist Vladimir Prop, the original uh, Rosalka was an a- appellation, which is like, I guess, like, a, a t- I googled what that was and I forgot. It's like a term that you give something. It, it's not necessarily a type of thing. It's a thing you call a thing. Um, a what? What was it? Ap- appellation. It's a... Uh, appellation. Yeah, yeah. Appellation. It's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's an appear- it's an apparition, basically. Yeah. Uh, used by Slavic uh, pagan peoples who link them with fertility and do not consider. Oh no, it's it's not a, a it's appellation is a title. Yeah, it's, it's a, a title. A title. It, it's a thing you call a thing. Yeah, it's an appellate. Okay. Yeah, um, and they thought that the uh, Rusalki uh, they weren't evil before the 19th century. Uh, they came out of the water in the spring to transfer life-giving moisture to the fields uh, and thus helped nurture the crops. Wow. I, you see, I always had this view of there being a lot of precipitation in the Slavic countries. I guess there wasn't that much. No, it was all water spirits getting the crops moist. Ugh. Getting all the dryads moist. Yeah, get all the moist dryads. I also all imagine the all of them dryads. look like pretty ladies moistening uh, crops, but they sound like the Swedish chef. This is more clear when looking at um, the Ukrainian version of the Rusalka a.k.a. the Mavka, which is the same creature, just a different name, uh, where they believe to live in uh, in groups, in forests, uh, mountain caves, or sheds. I like that they can just be hanging out in your shed. It's uh, like, hey, 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 hey. I am a Rusuka. I am not 
just I'm not just Tina from down the road. Don't worry about it. I'm Rasulka. I, I, she's she's only Rasulka. She goes, her dirt, her dirt, her dirt. Her burr, her burr, her. Oh nope, that's definitely Rasulka there. Let's let's just let them be. <laughs> but, no, that's like we went to school with her. We know she's not a Rasulka. Then explain her voice. <laughs> she's just doing a voice. Look, I can do it too. Her, 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 her. You never told me. No, no, wait. <laughs> um, all of which they decorated with rugs, which I also love. Like, I could picture myself in the 1900s getting rugs and just going, like, hiking and just putting rugs in caves just to mess with people. Because that, that's... You... So that that's basically the 19th century equivalent of buying a fanny pack from a, uh, from a designer brand. Ha <laughs> ha, I got my so... Balenciaga. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much... Yeah, I would definitely imagine you... Like, I would imagine one day I'm visiting your house and you're leaving because you... Like, I, it was like an un, unscheduled visit. Because I was like, just yeah. popping by. Because, you know, I was in town uh, selling potatoes or something. I don't know. I was doing something because this is this is 19th century uh, you, you were whatever. Co- you were collecting and archiving uh, potatoes. Something. Which is the 19th century something. Transformer. Yeah, so, because it kind of is, let's be real, it can transform into any kind of food. It can, Cause, and you're like, cause look, if the, you're, see the eyes on this one? That's, <laughs> like, archiving. It's more than meets the eyes. Oh. The, but, but. Oh, but, no, that took me too long. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, um, but anywho, I'm, I'm dropping by visiting you. And you're walking out of your house with your gi- like a giant rug over your shoulder. I'm like, where are you going with that? Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm gonna have some fun with folks. Yeah, so I'm gonna mess with people. You don't know who, who this is, but just call me Banksy. <laughs> listen, listen. Couple hundred years, there's gonna be a guy. He's gonna spray paint things. Don't ask me what spray paint is. I don't know what spray painting is. I just know that he's going to be spray painting stuff. And they're going to call him Banksy. And I'm 19th century Banksy, I've decided. There's... no. Well, well, we, I think we'd be more like 19th century Mr. Robot. Um, not Mr. Robot, Mr. Whatever the guy that copied Banksy was. Um, True. Well, no, but you're going to pretend that you're... That you're Banksy. No one's going to pretend that they're the dude who got into a fight... A, a turf fight with the guy who fought with Banksy. True. True, true, true. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, they made thread of stolen flax and wove thin transparent cloth for making clothes for themselves. Hot. Um, Tr- they, they are, li- you, are you sure transparent? Like, translucent would be the, the better term, I feel. Because transparent means you can see straight through it, so you can see some, you can see some bits. That's what's not... Oh, oh <laughs> that's a story for later. Um, uh, they loved flowers, which they wore in their hair. Uh, in the spring, they planted flowers in the mountains, uh, which they used to entice young men, whom they tickled to death. Listen, people got fetishes. People got fetishes. It's uh, and tickle- I'm not gonna kink shame. <laughs> you're oh, you're not you're not into that tickle snuff. I'm not I'm not kink shaming. I'm not kink shaming tickle snuff. Okay. There's I but, might kink shame tickle snuff. I might be advocating for Cougar Island, but I am not going to advocate for tickle snuff. Uh, God. There's a there's two words right there that I never thought would be a thing. There's well, you never heard about the Rasulka before, did you? It's all about that great great Russian folklore. Um tickle snuff. Interesting enough, it is said that they did not have reflections on the water, and they also did not cast a shadow. Um, so I, they're almost like vampire-esque in the sense, and I, I don't know, I probably should have looked into that, if the lack of a reflection is more widespread. Um, or was it, no, that was only, so this came pre-Bram um, Stoker. So he maybe was tangentially aware of Rasulka uh, folklore? It, it's possible. It's... Uh, wait, did you? We were talking about the reflections. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, the reflections. So it's, it's possible. 
it's not out of the picture, or he might have just thought it up because it's multiple it, people it can also, have similar ideas from. It also might be one of those things that just exists in in culture, like as a concept. Yeah, because like that's that's a, um, that's like a uncanny like so so a lot of monsters and paranormal entities are just different right and that's like a very clear like difference and it's an unsettling difference right because it's not something that's really easy to notice you know like the freaky thing is when you're standing next to someone and then you look down you're like you feel insubstantial why is that yeah. It's because you don't have a shadow. And like it it, it it it's like in a game when you're playing a game without lighting, it feels different. Like yeah. you know that something's wrong because there's no shadows. But you that can't say it. You can't like so put like, your finger in it. Like I think it's a I think it's like a just a facet of human nature, which people would people would then say, Oh, well, maybe there were things that didn't cast a shadow. No, I think it's just that things not casting a shadow is a freaky thought. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, well, the the other way to kind of identify if who you're looking at is Rosoko, and this is what I was talking about, where you, there's a tell and it's not the gills behind the ears, it's that they didn't have a back, which means that you could, if you looked at them from behind, you could see their internal organs. So basically a Holdra... But instead of being a hollow tree thing, they're a hollow. They, they are a open, just beating heart, open lungs, back thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I prefer I prefer my mythical creatures open face. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Rusalka, or as we call them in the states, a uh, hot open mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that would definitely get sales. That would get sales. So if you saw that on the menu and then you saw what you got, you would be thinking a totally different thing. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah, it, it it's it's popular. Uh, it's very popular in Atlantic City. Oh, it's so popular in Atlantic and City. Hot, it's it's a very popular. Um, it's a very popular uh, strip club sandwich. Yes, the wondering. hot open mermaid. The hot uh, open mermaid. <laughs> um, so I, obviously your next question is but Brandon how can I become a Rasalka well John you can't because you need to meet some criteria um, one I meet all of them you must I'm just telling you right now you meet all of them mm-hmm. okay good because you must either be one a girl who died because you were in a bad relationship and your partner forcibly drowned you or you intentionally drowned yourself or okay. two an infant who died unchristianed D- did you not know that, that that is me? That is you? Yeah, yeah. I died. I died as an infant. There's and I show c- me your back, sir. No. That's <laughs> private. <laughs> I don't show the hot open mermaid to everyone. No, oh, no. <laughs> Only a few people get the hot open mermaid. I don't show my hot open mermaid to everyone. Oh... This one's got some sentences, doesn't it? That's that's a that's a that is a interesting um that's a very interesting way of of like a very interesting euphemism. Yeah. I don't know what it's for, but it's a euphemism. Oh god, it's a euphemism. You're I can only talk this way to you and I guess other people who listen were like, I'm just gonna call my back that now. We're like <laughs> If my, oh, man, my hot open mermaid really hurts yeah. today. Like, my cat was on my shoulder. She got spooked. Anyway, long story short, I've got a deep gash in my hot open mermaid. Uh, <laughs> gross. Got, got this weird patch of hair in my hot open mermaid. I think I think I might have, like, there's a little spot on my hot open mermaid. I'm a little worried about it. I got to go to a doctor, yeah. get it checked out. Yeah. Maybe get it biopsied. Real talk, I actually don't grow any hair on my hot open mermaid except for like one little weird spot, that, like like the size of a donut. I don't think I grow any hair on my hot open mermaid at all. <laughs> I really don't. I've got like one like weird spot. 
I grow zits on my hot open mermaid, but that's a different story. That's a different story. That's more the bad. I try to exfoliate, yeah. but, you know. It's hard. You can't really reach. It's, it's hard to reach difficult. your hot open mermaid. <laughs> it's really hard to touch your hot open mermaid. Um, so the good news uh, is that for the latter, uh, you have seven years to, on Pentecost, throw a hanky into the air and say the name uh, of the Rusoka and say, I baptize you. And then they go to heaven. Uh, if not, they turn to Rosalka, right? So if an infant so, dies unbaptized, you have seven years and seven Pentecosts to throw a ha- hanky in the air and baptize the hanky, and then baby go heaven. Okay. Okay. So is there is this a Pokemon situation? Right. Is where so you know how Yam Mask? So do you know do you know about Yam Mask in Pokemon? I know of Yamask. I've never actually captured one. Well, I've so, kind of captured I haven't played with them. It's Pokedex entry basically says it carries a mask of its face when it was a human. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's dark. So, so is this like is this like a Yamask situation where you're basically turning into a Pokemon? <laughs> I guess if Heaven is um, like the Pokemon regions... Which I kind of hope it is now that I say that. Let's start this new religion. Oh, man. Join my cult. Heaven is Pokemon land. You've already got a cult. Just add that onto your tenants. Yeah. Yeah. Tenant 11 is uh, when you die, you go to Kanto. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd rather go to Johto, but that's just me. <laughs> uh, why Pentecost? Um, because that's known as Mavka's Easter. Where they, which is the Rasulka slash Mavla, depending which region you're in, uh, dance and sing and play games and have orgies. And a demon even plays the flute. It sounds dope. I'm it not going to lie. It actually sounds legit awesome. I would love to have an orgy with a fl- flutist demon. Listen, if if, uh, if Henry Zabrowski shows up and he's playing that flout, the flute, he's being that flautist, I'm in. That would be great. He just prances around. There's all As people, Gary Bunda. people's <laughs> all doing different things to other people's bits. Oh, it's probably pretty great. It would be pretty great. Listen, also, did you you hear that the uh, Satanic Temple in Poughkeepsie got burnt? Like, no, what? Yeah, the House of Halloween. Yeah. Um. Somebody. Somebody did a uh, like religious art based arson against it. Someone did an pulled an arson. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, it's uh, the what you call it? Um, yeah, it's been destroyed. Actually, what according the to heck? this article? Yeah, um, for people who don't realize, Satanism is not actually worshiping sh- Satan. Yeah, just, sa- just wanna Satanism wanna pull- is the is just not being religious. Yeah, and it's it's just people like kind of. It, it, it's people being like, like it's people fucking with you, yeah, with, with well, like normal. Well, it, it's people using the excuse of we're religion to do things to like mess with people who are using a religion to do things to make a point that religion shouldn't be able to do things that they're being allowed to do in government. Yes, it, it, it's it's more of a statement. It's more of like a political statement than it is a yeah. religion. It's like an artistic political statement. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a thing. Yeah. Too bad yeah. one of the ten things you shouldn't do isn't arson. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's add that to your let's add that your to your uh list of of cult things. Yeah, right number ahead. thirteen is thou shall not arson. <laughs> um the most common theme is that uh Rosoka is not invariably malevolent and would be allowed to die in peace if her death is avenged. Meaning like what? <coughs> how do you have, okay wait a second wait a second wait a second so so remember how do you, you can have, become Rosalka if your partner forcibly drowns you to death so but, then if you take vengeance on the person who killed you then you become un and you can go to heaven so if it's an infant though how do you take vengeance on an infant dying um there's probably a number of old timey messed up ways um I think the infant dying was just you know, well. If, with the, in the case of an infant, you've got seven years to baptize the Hank. Oh no! If the but if the infant drowned, 
unbaptized, that would be a different. No, if it, it was, was baptized, a, if it was and if it drowned. Was a girl, infant. That was that baptized. Was unbaptized. That, unbaptized. No, that was and baptized drowned. and drowned. Then you would have to take vengeance on the baby drowning. Yes. Which yes. Oh, this is kind of some kind of weird Russian Batman thing we're getting into. Oh uh, my god. Like like no, this would definitely be this would be a fucking this would be a show. Uh, yeah. I am the knight. <laughs> Look and, at my back. I, I'm, I'm imagining I'm imagining that the Rasilka created from this is just like a large headed baby. Yeah. Who's just like floating around like Did you do this to me? Yeah, there's got to be a, a Rasalka in the Witcher video game, now that I think about it, somewhere. Probably. Because it is, like, the Wild Hunt, especially, especially 3. Yeah. Because that's, like... Um... Um, yeah. Her main purpose is, however, to lure young men, seduced either by her looks or her voice, into the depths of Sid Waters, where she will entangle their feet with long red hair and submerge them. Uh, her body would instantly become very slippery and not allow the victim to cling onto her body in order to reach the surface. Uh, well, she- listen, that's that, that, that <laughs> is explicitly a uh, a fetish. That oh, that's got to be a fetish. Um, yeah. Uh, she would then wait until the victim drowned, or on some occasions. Or, as mentioned before, tickled them. Um, so you would also, like, imagine you're drowning and then also being tickled. Which I guess is a good idea for the Rosalka, because then you're forcing them to, like, breathe in water if they laugh. It is, it is, it is. Um, also, it's called the Nuru Massage in Japan. Wait, what? Nuru? How do you spell it? N-U-R-U. Let me make sure I'm not on my works VPN real quick. Yeah, it's probably right. a good idea. Nuru Massage. Let's see. New massage. Erotic Japanese from Kawasaki. Technique. Whatever. Show me images. Do you? Ah, yes. The new room massage. Yeah. So that that's basically what the Rasulka's body becoming slippery is in my mind. That's what I'm imagining. That some of these people, like I get air mattress, whatever, slippery. It seems a little bit dangerous because they are very slippery looking, but also doing awkward positions, which to me means there's that's ha- like you might sprain an ankle. Oh, it's possible. It's that, possible. Yeah. Some it's, of it's, this, it's a dangerous act. Like, I would definitely put some textured material down beforehand so you don't slip. Oh yeah. God, that reminds. Oh, God, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, she would. Uh, well, or oh, right, tickled. Um, it's also believed by a few accounts that Rusalki can change their appearance to match the tastes of the men they're about to seduce. Although Rusalka is generally considered to uh, represent the universal uh, beauty, therefore is highly feared yet respected in Slavic culture. Universal beauty doesn't exist. Not really, no. Unless, no. No, I was trying to think of something. Unless, unless, no. It's unless you're talking about guitars, and then the only answer is Telecaster. Um, Unlike... That's fair. That is fair. I'm working on my sixth one. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Unlike fishtailed mermaids, Rusalki, which I believe is the plural version of Rusalka... Uh, have legs and can walk on land. They enjoy dancing and climbing trees. Um, oh, that's got to be hard with all the slippery bits. It's got to be hard with all the slippery bits. Cause, like, and then your like, back you is open and you just get like, poked in the lung by a stick. Uh-uh. Not for me. Oh, that, this is gross. That's a gross thought. Every year at the beginning of summer, around the first week of June, Slavic cultures celebrate Rusalki Week. During this time, swimming in any body of water is absolutely forbidden. So, wait, does this include pools? I think any body of water would... Well, is the pool a body of water? Do the, is it, it like... Kind of, what, is the, what, is, what is the cutoff point for a body of water? Is a tub a body of water? I think anything large enough to drown in... Because that's the thing that they do. So what you're telling me is a cup 
is a body of water. Because, like, you can drown in a cup of water. Yeah, it just has to cover your mouth and your nose. That's literally it. Yeah, I was thinking, like, a literal measuring cup, but that, that you couldn't drown. Like, if well, you were I laying... Could, I, Brandon, Brandon, I could drown in a cup of, of a measuring cup. Just drink it. Just drink it. I could drown in it. Just drink it. No, no, we're not talking about drinking it. I'm talking about whether or not you can drown in it. You can drown in that. Just drink it. That's all. That's I mean, this. If you drown in a cup of water, then just drink it. I mean, uh, significant accumulation of water generally on a planet's surface. But it includes small pools of water, such as ponds, wetlands, and puddles. Well, if you're including a puddle, but it's on... So then I guess the cutoff is like in-ground pool would would be would count? Above-ground pool would have to count. Yeah, it's in contact with the ground, so yeah, yeah I get it. It would have to count. It, you'd have to have an above... If, if an in-ground pool and tubs outside. Oh, and tubs out. Yeah, true. I like that. Tubs outside. The, uh, the Rusalki... Our oh, belief- you, I, I cut yeah. you off before you finished that sentence, by the way. What sentence? The, uh, as it, it as it will mean certain death if you, you get in that body of water. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't say certain death, but I think we can assume that you'd be tickled to death by a slippery lady. Which makes, which makes the death in a measuring cup all the more embarrassing. <laughs> it makes it all the more, like, kinky. Like, to, like, drown being tickled to death by a slippery lady in a cup of water? Like, that's got to be a thing. Oh, it definitely is a thing. That's, listen, if you see Rosalki, you go straight to horny jail. The Rosalki... I mean, it, based on the de- definition of it, yeah. Yeah. It's like seeing a succubus. When are we... We're probably going to do a succubus at some point. Succubi and incubi, incubi are definitely going to make it to this podcast at some point, right? They're going to be there. I think um, we got very close um, to uh, during one of the... the Filipino uh, monster episodes because mm. um, there's one where I covered like a, 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 it was almost like a grab bag because it was um, yeah yeah li- like the Filipino vampire version I think there was a succubus in there because I definitely remember uh, like s- the stealing of boners um, I probably I probably shouldn't be the one who does the succubus one because uh, that's too horny jail for John that's too horny jail for John no the succubus we're going to release in our OnlyFans account um Listen, I'm working on it. Don't worry. <laughs> Good. The, the Rusalki are believed to come ashore and play uh, in Weeping Willow and swing in the birch trees. Then they gather to perform circle dances in the moonlight, which sounds very um, similar to, like, fairies. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the yeah, fairy it's, got some, it's, got some fairy, it's got some fairy circle energy to it. Yeah, it definitely does. So let's... So are the Rusalki just a bunch of mushrooms that are given sentience? They might be just a bunch of mushrooms who are given sentience. And they just, they tickle with their spores, and they, uh, only fans. Any passersby, only hyphen fans.org. Um, any passersby uh. who should have the misfortune of witnessing one of these events is forced to dance with them until they die. Okay, this is, this is very similar to the fairies, then. The, it, it is very similar to it the fairies. It pretty much, it pretty much is the fairy, uh... The fair, the piece of fairy folklore, yeah. just codified to a different creature. Also, also click that link. <laughs> click, 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 click the link. Click it. Click, click it. Click, click. Yeah, <laughs> it's only fans. Yeah, it's just pictures of fans. It's only fans. Air multipliers, tower fans, pedestal fans, misting fl- fans. Ooh, kinky. Whole house fans, industrial fans. Let me get some of that misting fan action. Oh yeah. Ooh, well, you know what? The missing fans, fans could also be called Swamp Cooler. Uh, that, that's what they use in California. Uh, let's see. At the end of the week, towns and villager, v- villages near bodies of water hold ceremonial burials in order to appease the Rasalki and or banish them back to the water. Uh, let's see. The relatives of drowned or strangled persons, which... By the way, that's the first time they included strangulation. So, they, like, it, it kind of varies place to place. Um, yeah. Uh, go out to their graves, taking with them pancakes and spirits and eggs. And spirits is liquor, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So, the eggs are broken 
and the spirits are poured over the graves, after which the remnants are left for the Rasalki, uh, and these lines so, are sung. Yeah? So I like how they don't mention what happens to the pancakes. The fact of the matter is, the pancakes... They're for you. by the people. They're, yeah. they're, they're for you, because you just did a lot of work. They're for you, 100%. Um, so while breaking eggs, pouring out some liquor for the homies, and eating pancakes, they sing... Uh, Queen Rosalka, made and fair, do not destroy the soul, do not cause it, cause it to be choked, and we will make uh, obscenes to thee. Uh, on the people who forget to do this, Rosalka's r- 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 words, Rosalka will wreak, wreak vengeance. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, these traditions were maintained well into the 1930s until they were stamped out by Soviet forces. Yeah, that's, that's that tracks. That tracks. Like, went for way longer than uh, one one would have uh, assumed. I mean, stuff like like burial traditions will continue way past the point of uh, people believing in them. To be totally honest, though, that's um, true. Like it, it, it's one of those aspects of humanity where um, it's like. It's something people aren't good at dealing with. So whatever rituals that exist and their parents use is likely going to be the rituals that they use. Um, Because ritual is there to basically make the hard stuff easy. Yeah, I think I just want to have a party. I want to be thrown into a ditch in Sky Burial, basically. In Sky Burial? Yeah, let the coyotes take me and the raccoons. Oh, when you said sky burial, I pictured like, um, like, like, uh, if you go, what's it called when you jump out of a plane with a parachute? Skydiving. That we were going to make it look like you just had a skydiving accident with your body. Call me DB Cooper. Actually, think we there's, found him. I believe there's a service where if you die, that you, they could like do stuff to it in a movie. Like, 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 if they're like people get blown up in an explosion, they might include your body in that as a, like part of the effects. I don't know if that's true. I think I heard about that. Uh, let's see. Can that sounds you problematic. Have your body blown up in a movie? Question mark. Uh, I feel full of learning. My mother's body was sold. Ten body, ex- yeah. There's ten body. Ex- um, I don't, this is gonna re- need some more. Um, this needs more research. More this research. Is more than this is more than a. This is more than a three second bit on yeah an episode. Uh, in certain districts bordering on the sea, the people believe or used to believe in marine rasalkas, who are supposed it, uh, in some places, for instance, Astrocon, to raise storms and vex shipping. Uh, but as a general rule, the Rosalkas are looked upon in Russia as haunting lakes and streams uh, at the bottom of which they dwell in crystal halls, radiant with gold and silver and precious stones. Where are they getting crystal, the crystals and the gold and the silver in, like, a, a lake? Yeah, in, like, a lake. Or the, See, I think that oh, there has reminds- to be some, like, water spirit world that regular people can't observe. You remember the the Courage the Cowardly Dog episode with the puddles of water? Oh, now that you say it, like, ah, uh, I would have to rewatch it. But I remember there was an episode with puddles of water. And something coming out of that. No, Queen you of the could Black get Puddle. In. Queen of the Black Puddle. Queen of the Black Puddle? Do you know? Did you just remember That's, that? I looked it up. Uh, she only appeared in a few number of episodes. <coughs> she appeared in T. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like, I'm thinking that that's got some Rasulka energy to it. Yeah, for sure. Because like, she had like a, a glimmering castle under the ground, and she like, was all about drowning Eustace. There's some pretty heavy Rasulka vibes. Yeah. And then there was a dog version. I don't recall the dog version. Yeah, the dog version. The dog version was there to uh, tempt courage into the dip, the depths. Okay. Oh, that's. I don't like that. 
that dog version. Ugh. Uh, let's see. In some places, they were fond of spinning. In others, they were given uh, to washing linen. Yeah. She she looks almost like, who is it, Elvira? Yeah, she's got an Elvira vibe to her. Yeah. Uh, let's see. During the week before Wintsuntidi, uh, as many songs testify, they sit upon trees and ask for linen garments. Uh, up to present day in Little Russia, it is customary to hang on uh, boughs of oaks and other trees at that time of year, shifts and rags in skeins of thread, all intended to represent the Rosalkas. In White okay. Russia, the peasants affirm that during that week, the forests are traversed by naked women and children, and whoever meets them, if he wishes to escape a premature death, must fling them a handkerchief uh, or some scrap torn from his dress. Now that just... See, that's a thing. That reminded me of the Nathan for You bit where he does the magic in front of the children and his <laughs> pants might fall down. That, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. That also means you can just wander around naked in Russia and people will give you free hankies. I mean, hey, listen, I need a handkerchief. I need a hanky. I need a hanky, and I got this naked body that I can walk around in the forest for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the Ser- in the Serret uh, government, the Rasalkas are held in bad repute. They are uh, described as hideous, humpbacked, hairy creatures with sharp claws and an iron hook, which they try to seize on pas- passers-by. If anyone ventures to bathe in a river on White Sunday uh, without having uttered a preliminary prayer, they instantly drag them to the bottom. Or, what a mood. What a mood. I like this. This is like the metal version of Rosalka. Yeah, it kind of is. Uh, if he goes into the woods without taking a handful of wormwood, uh, he runs a serious risk for the Rosalkas may ask him, what have you got in your hands? Is it uh, the Russian word for uh, parsley? And if he replies, uh, Poland, they cry, uh, hide under the hedge, and uh, he is safe. If he says some other Russian word, they exclaim, Ah, my dushka! And begin tickling him until he foams from the mouth. Which is Wow! Great. Basically just lie about having parsley. Or they tickle you till you foam from the mouth. Listen, apparently... Jeez, this is like... Th- th- that. Th- you remember that documentary, Tickled? I do remember that documentary, Tickled. This is that kind of this is that kind of vibe. I think yeah. I think we need to have I need I think we need to have uh, Gareth and uh, Dave Anthony weigh in on this this particular cryptid. I think so as well. You know, I saw the movie Tickled before I listened to that episode. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's uh. It that movie was something. Um, in the vicinity of Nipir. Uh, the peasants believe that the wildfires, which are sometimes seen at night ab- flickering above graves or around the tamuli called kurgans in the woods and swampy places, are lit by the Rosakas. So they're just your bog spirit arsonist or forest arsonist. Um, yeah, yeah. Who wish thereby to allure the incautious travelers to their ruin. So, like, don't go put out a fo- forest fire by yourself at night, I guess is the moral of that story. I mean, I, I think, I think the idea is like, so if you're in the woods <coughs> and you see a fire flickering, right? Yeah. Um, historically, that would mean that there's another person and like, for lack of a better word, especially in Russian woods and like Slavic woods, um, it's probably safer to be with someone else than not, right? Yeah. Uh, and as a result, people would go to those things and then find nobody because usually uh, it's something... It's like swamp gas, right? Yeah. Because the fact that they're saying swampy places makes me think it's ball lightning. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. In, in many places, these wandering will-o'-the-wisp are regarded as being the souls of unbaptized children, and so small rasulkas themselves. Uh, well, it's it's their it's their pre-evolved form. It's, they haven't. They're just Pokemon, man. Rasulkas are just It's their baby Pokemon. Po- it's their baby baby Pokemon. They got to get their happiness up. It takes seven years to get the yeah. happiness up. It's a baby. 
and the baby doesn't evolve until you drown it, and then it turns into a will of the wisp. Well, the uh, baby is just the egg, the egg form. A ba- baby, just Rasulka egg. Uh, baby is Rasulka egg. Until you baptize it, then it's a it's a bad Rasulka egg. As a uh, a bonus monster, the somewhat similar version of the Rasulka, which is the male version, uh, kept popping up when I was trying to do this research. Um, however, there is less about him. So I figured this would be the perfect way to talk about the Vadianoi. Or Vad... Dan- yeah, Vadianoi. Uh, it is a naked old man with the face of a frog, a green beard, and his body oh. is covered in fish scales and algae, along with glowing red eyes. When he is oh. angered, he can smash dams and drag his victims into the water. Oh, he's a look. He is... He, he's, he's got himself a look. The other version is the Vodnik, which is a little bit different as they are mostly human in appearance, but have gills and webbed fingers, as well as <sighs> green skin and hair. Their overall <sighs> dress and appearance is bizarre, sometimes even uh, resembling a vagrant uh, having patchy shirts. And I included a picture of Old Greg because my new theory is that Old Greg himself is a Vodnik. I got both parts down there. <laughs> <laughs> you want some Baileys? You ever drink some Baileys from a shoe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Old Greg also has like an underwater kingdom that he drags fishermen down to. Like Old Greg, probably not on purpose, but I think is a Vodnik. I would not be surprised if it was on purpose. Maybe. Sometimes that show does weird stuff, and like they're clever. Yeah. Um. Oh God, he's staring into my soul. He is staring into your soul. I'm Old Greg. They can withstand lingering for hours outside of their ponds. When they do so, one can certainly discern them by their webbed uh, coattails from which water is dripping under all circumstances. All uh, right, I'm looking up whether or not Old Greg is a vodnik now. <laughs> okay. They store the souls of drowned victims in old teapots or maybe Bailey's, a Bailey's bottle. Uh, however, I choose to believe they are Bailey's bottles. Oh, I guess I thought of that joke when I was writing that. Shoot. Do you think old Greg was a Vodnik is a Tumblr post? Is it really? Someone has a... Is Someone has a made a Tumblr post. Do you think... Uh, here comes old Greg. He's a scaly manfish. <laughs> Come here, my fuzzy little man, Peach. I'm old Greg! There is there is an actual somebody made a Tumblr post about it. Huh. That's interesting. Uh Vodniki, which is plural, uh spend their time running their territory or in their spare time playing cards, smoking pipes, um, I guess dancing, singing songs about love games, or just sitting at the water surface. Um which is more or less just loitering. Fishermen ask the Vodnik for help by placing a pinch of tobacco in the water and saying Here's your tobacco, Lord Vodnik. Now give me a fish. Listen, the fact of the matter is they weren't giving him the proper tribute. The proper drug tribute. And that drug is Bailey's. That drug? Bailey's as close as you can get it. (laughs) Without getting your eye wet? Is it without getting your eye wet? I think so. This is Bailey's as close as you can get it without your eye wet. Let's see. I'm going to do a live edit. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Got to update this part. Boop. Because I wrote this one a few months ago. You ever drink Bailey's from a shoe? I'm looking up old Greg quotes because now I need to... Well, Are you this? looking up old Greg sheets? Don't forget the last part. Make an assessment. Which make an assessment. Ma- make an assessment. Um, make an assessment. Th- that <laughs> people forget because it, it's... Uh, the lesser viewed of the old Greg skits is the um, the funk and uh, the whole legend of like Bootsy Collins. Oh, jeez. That's also not Old Greg. Oh, is that is not it? Old Greg? I think that's Old Greg. Because he t- like that, that's the Old Greg videos with, like, the less hits because they're lower quality. If you haven't watched no, Old that's, Greg. No, that's not Old Greg. That's not Old Greg. That's, 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 uh... Was that the uh, Fox? So, no, so, okay. That's, Bo- the Legend of Bootsy Collins, I think, is a separate thing. The funk, it's the mighty boosh, all of it. What episode was the funk in? One second. I, oh, it is an old Greg. Ha ha! I am see, right. The, the funk is a living creature, but it's about the size of a medicine ball, but it's covered in teats. 
They came from another planet, landed on Bootsy Collins' house. <laughs> Back then, Bootsy was a simple farmer, but he took one look at all those mauve titties and lost his mind. He began to milk the funk, made himself a funk shake, began to feel all fizzy inside. He found he could see around corners. Suddenly, he was passed out, but when he came to, baby, he was slapping a bass guitar fast and loose like some kind of delirious funky priest. <laughs> Two months later, he was in the world famous with his band Parliament, and everyone wanted a piece of the funk. Rick Wakeman, and even the Bee Gees. One day, Parliament was traveling on the mother sh- mothership, fooling around with the funk, when George Clinton kicked the funk clean overboard. That was July 2nd, 1978, the day the funk died. Two weeks later, I found the funk in a bed with, some conger- with a conger eel. At first, I thought it was a scene enemy, but under closer inspection... I realized it was a funky ball of tits from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> I offered to take them back to Parliament, but he said he was done with that shit, and they never listened to him anyway, and they were only interested in his funky produce. So I let him live down here, down here with me in this cave. Yeah. Ah, uh, I miss the Mighty Boosh. It's so sad what happened to all of them. What? The, the bus crash. What are you talking about? I'm lying. There was no, no Mighty Boosh bus crash. Yeah, the guy who plays uh, Vince Moon, Vince Noir, is like well, it, uh, in everything. It? No, he's no, in the Great British Bake Off. No feeling. Is he in the Great British? Bake Off? I, he's in. He was in something. Uh, in something. I'm gonna have to watch. I'm gonna have to start watching that again. I haven't seen that in a while. Larry King died. He did. I saw that. Uh, yeah, he's the co-presenter of the Great British Bake Off since t- 2017. What? I didn't know that. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, this is also the end of the episode if you're still listening. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's the end. That's that's why I read the entirety of the funk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he's Stan the Executioner in Disenchanted. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Have he's you seen Disenchanted? Things. The newest season of Disenchanted? No, I watched the last good. season. I haven't seen the new one. The new one's pretty good. The new one's pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, I did do this thing. So... I watched the last I watched the last 19 episodes. The first 19 episodes. For whatever reason, I didn't see the 20th episode, which was the season finale. I walk into um Mike and Mike's house one day and I watch I it was like I walk in and they're watching Disenchanted. And I'm like, "Oh cool, Disenchanted." How far are you guys into it? And they're like, we just started. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm watching it. And I'm like, I'm so fucking lost. I don't know what, what the hell is going on. I watched the last season. How much did I miss? Turns out I didn't watch the entirety of the last episode. Oh. So, like, everything that happened, I was very like, what is going on? But anywho. Uh, I've, been, I've been watching a lot of Hell's Kitchen and Naruto. Yeah, I saw that you were watching a lot of Naruto. I'm on halfway through season two. I don't know what that means. Because there's so many episodes of Naruto. It, it, it means that there's like, thir- I think, close to 30 episodes before Sakura gets in a battle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, the rest of it is just her swooning over boys and people saying, you can't fight. You, you like boys too much. She does swoon a lot, doesn't she? She does a lot of the swooning. And then there was... That's why Hinata's the best girl. There was the the, the guy, Rock Lee is his name. He's got weird eyes. He's he's Rock Lee. He's Rock Lee. How, how deep into the... How deep into the... the... Rock Lee is arc. fighting the sand guy, and he just opened up the third chakra gate. Oh, you're so you're in the you're in the battle. I'm like, in that with, battle. With, yeah, you're in the you're in the battle sequence. He's fighting my memory. The, I forget his is, name. It starts with a G. He's got the jar Gara? of sand on his back. Gara, yeah, Gara? you got it. You Gara, yep. I can understand forgetting uh, the dude who controls the puppets, but Gara. There's, I really can't be bothered to remember names a lot. Also, I blow through because I don't have Crunchyroll. I blow through anime really fast because I can only watch one or two seasons. So I just don't commit to remembering names because it's not like I'm going to get to watch all the episodes. I have to get cr- Crunchyroll again though because like 
all the good anime, mm-mm. It's not, and like, they, Netflix just got Demon Hunter uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba, and I watched that, like, years ago. Kimetsu no Yaiba is real good. Yeah. It's also not years ago. Well, like, it's last crazy year. Crazy long I watched time. It, I watched yeah. it last year. <laughs> but that was really it's not, good. It's not that far off. I need, I need to get more into my, uh, I, my, my sweet, sweet isekai, and I'm, I'm just about... Oh, run, I'm run so... Out. Dude, freaking... Uh, so I'm a spider. So what is so good? I want to watch that. I I haven't seen the most recent like Shield Hero or um I got reincarnated as a slime or because I, I I got I, I, gotta I got reincarnated as a, so there's a new there's a new season of I got reincarnated as a slime coming out. Shield Hero hasn't gotten its new season yet. Um, oh, but so I'm a spider. So what is delightful? Yeah, it's absolutely delightful. And I was watching it, to, I watched it yesterday, and the episode was over, and I'm like, wait, the episode's over? Because, like, I was enjoying it so much that the passage of time didn't register. Oh, I might have to, I might have to sign up for Crunchyroll. Yeah. This is, this is not an ad. This is, this is not an ad. Uh, I did cancel just, CBS. I'm, I'm just a weeb. Are you, though? Not really. Because I don't want to be Japanese. I'm not like that. Like I want to. I'm not a wanna be Japanese yeah. white dude. Yeah, I just like, enjoy like Japanese culture. The whole reason culture. it took me uh, over a decade, decade and a half, to get to start watching Naruto is how off-putting I found the people who really liked Naruto when it was actually on TV. And the same thing with a lot of really good. Like I, I hate. I missed out on a lot of stuff because of the fan anime fans. Like the people who liked Inuyasha were like made me not like Inuyasha until like after I left school. Uh, the new, the new, uh, uh, the new Inuyasha series is weird. It's real weird. Did they make it again? They made a new series with Inuyasha's. Uh, Inuyasha and Kogome's daughter and Shishom not Shishomaru. Shishomaru is the little tiny fox dude. What's the name of the big demon? I don't know. I started watching uh, Yu Yu Hakusho again too. That's on just regular streamables. Yeah, that. Oh, it is Shishomaru. Um, so Shishomaru's twin daughters are in it too. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho is great, and then it ends in the middle of the fighting arc, in the middle of the the tournament arc. Yeah, so, it just kind of stops. It just stops. So deal with that. Yeah. Is it, I watch uh, Tri- Trigun. This is now just turned into what animes that I've been watching on Hulu. Yeah. Did you watch Badlands Rumble? I think you own Badlands Rumble, though. I do own Badlands Rumble. Yeah, because I, I was there when you bought it. We both purchased it Yeah. at the same time. There's. So. You, you know what I haven't seen somewhere, like on any streaming service, but you lent it to me, is... um. Desert Punk. I haven't found like a, a streaming place for it, but you Funimation. Me... Oh, it's funny. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that was a wild show. Yeah, that was a wild show. I I wanted to make a Desert Punk costume for the longest time. There's. It was a really good show. Because like I thought that his helmet was really cool. There's the I just oh, I just anime is good. That's all. The end. End of statement. Fair. All right. Well, I guess we should probably wrap put a put a bow on this one then, uh, before we talk about more anime, or old Greg again. Uh, oh, Greg! So our web <laughs> our website's cryptopediacast dot com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. So is our Twitter. Uh, you can email us at cryptopediacast at gmail dot com or us at cryptopediacast dot com. Uh, we do have transcription that I'm currently working on. Oh, good luck. Finally. Uh, so we have the first episode transcribed. I got to do more of the episodes. I loaded them all into my transcription app, and now I've got to do editing. Um, so I'll probably be pumping that out when I have time. So yeah, uh, we also have a Patreon, and there's Jackalope level support for that, which gets you mentioned on the podcast. So Brandon, give us yes. a yes. We could thank uh, Clay Sinclair, the founder of the Himbo Brandon fan club. The He's, Marty well, Von Party, the guy who thinks that we should sabotage a uh, uh, a cruise ship. Uh, 
<laughs> Bert Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, and fuck Andrew Jackson. Um, want to point out that we've been on Clay's stream a bunch lately, and he recently got affiliate. So congrats. Yeah, congrats. Um, I I think it's Sicarius twenty three is his uh his yes. Twitch account. Um, so check that out. Um, we have a Facebook group that I have had to put certain members on uh, their posts need to be approved because they keep making posts about Bitcoin. But, it is yeah. not it is not a cryptocurrency group, guys. Um, it's just not. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, all there is not. to it. Um, we have a Discord where a bunch of really degenerate stuff happens. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. I, it's been made. It's been made clear to me that a lot of the places people are using this don't necessarily have subscribe or rating sections. So, yeah. So, whatever. so uh, I don't know, just share with friends or what have you. Yeah. <laughs> There's, he's reading a text. My sister also says that we should start a cult. For a different reason, but I still think we should start a cult. Uh, 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 send monster requested stories. <laughs> <laughs> Why are there so many cults popping up around you, Brandon? There is, I mean, follow the Brandon. You've got that himbo cult leader vibe. Yeah, yes I do. Uh, so you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, my Instagram is mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. And then the, the music plays.